Chairman DeFazio for five minutes. Uh, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Mathers, uh, you point out uh, that you know, we're using 43% of the capacity of our freight trucks. You give some examples, you had examples of Ocean Spray uh, and, uh, you know, the Colgate, Kimberly, Clark, and Walmart. What, what federal policies could we adopt to uh, encourage higher utilization so we don't have part full trucks running everywhere? That's a, a th thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. It's a, a great question. I, mean, I think that, you know, as we've seen, there's a lot of, um, you know, just operational choices that the, the shippers themselves uh, ha have to make. So um, it's less clear to me exactly on, on, uh, on federal policy choices. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I would think that, um, you, know, you know, part of this is, is kind of information and data sharing between companies. I think we see a great opportunity between shippers to, you know, co-load and collaborate um, in their shipping. And that was the, the example in the, um, in the testimony of, of Colgate and, um, and Kimberly Clark, right, you know, where they're taking trucks off the road, they're delivering more products uh, to, CV, to CVS, you know, uh, inventory costs are going down. Um, you know, I think the big barrier there is, um, is, is, is data and transparency and companies working together. And so I think, you know, it could be uh, um, an, an, an effort to, to, you know, to study that issue, to bring shippers together and really, um, you know, try to, try to understand how they can get better data transparency among shippers. Okay. I'm still, still thinking about what the federal policies would be, but I, I agree with the transparency and the, and the data sharing, but we've got to figure out ways to... Uh, incent that or encourage that. Um, Mr. Jeffries, um, as you know, uh, a couple of decades ago, uh, Congress gave Amtrak uh, trains uh, preference over freight, uh, and uh, DOJ can enforce that preference, they've only done it once. And under PREA, Congress uh, directed the FRA and Amtrak to develop minimum performance standards, and then, of course, the freight industry sued. Uh, and, uh, you know, now our delays in on-time performance are up dramatically. I just was recently meeting with uh, Richard Anderson, and, you know, I live 112 miles from Portland. Uh, I'd rather not drive on Interstate 5, but their scheduled time <laughs> is, uh, is three and a half hours for 112 miles, and they frequently don't meet that. Uh, we now have freights that are running three miles long. They don't have three mile long uh, sidings. So um, what, uh, how do you recommend that we might better uh, deal with this issue? Because I'm pretty much getting to the point of some pretty strong legislation. So do you have any suggestions short of that? So I think we're, we're happy to see FRA moving forward with the rule. And, you know, they estimated at a hearing in the Senate Commerce Committee, they expect to have that out, you know, next June, I believe. Um, we think they're taking the right approach by taking information from all stakeholders moving forward. I think on the dashboard. Was that the FRA? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, we had Mr. Pretori here. He's one of the most embarrassing witnesses we ever had, uh, oh, to tell the truth. So I, I, I'm putting a, not putting a lot of stock in his rule, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But uh, you got to do something here, or we're going to have to do something in the surface bill that's probably not going to like, and it's going to be very prescriptive. So I just well, we think it's to important that. FRA move forward with the rule to get metrics yeah, and standards done. Message across. Um, Ms. Goodchild, you, you point out a whole host of issues, but I, you're, I guess you're an academic. It's kind of short this on solutions at this point, particularly the urban congestion and the last mile delivery stuff. Well, I think that the industry is is experimenting. I think if you look at the example was raised of, of e-bikes in, in New York City, I'm encouraged by the, the motivation to try new solutions. And those need to be tried before we can identify them as, as well-established solutions. So I think there's a need for experimentation. Uh, we can start with ideas. There are lots of ideas, but it's important to move from ideas to evaluation and consensus and, and establishing those as, as things we might want to set forth as solutions that, that communities should consider. So I think, you know, experimentation and test and supporting that to the extent possible, allowing that to the extent possible is important right now. And part of that also comes from uh, having data and information, investing in, in, in data that we can use to actually evaluate and compare and contrast. Um, also to the point about sort of 
trucks not being particularly well utilized, there's a very strong market incentive for trucking companies to utilize their equipment. They're very good at that. And the reason they don't is that they're responding to customer demands. And so I think allowing, um, you know, considering the, the motivation and the role of the private carrier, listening to what would help them uh, run a more efficient system is, is important. So we have zero visibility about parking availability. If you run a, a tour in the city of Seattle and your goal is to do that quickly and efficiently, Lee, you have no idea what parking will be available uh, at what time, and that's essential to you being, to, ha to having good performance. Mm -hmm. So investing in technology that allows us to see what infrastructure is available and to measure its performance will result in benefits in supply chain efficiency. Okay, that's interesting, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair.